Shalom all. Hey guys, Sunday morning here. It's about, oh, just nine o'clock in the morning. Finished my early morning prayers with the rising of the sun. Did you know that's a Jewish tradition dating back from the days of the Essenes? Yeah, there have been people, mystics, Kabbalists, doing that for literally over 2,000 years. What's the best thing that you do after you finish your morning prayers? Well, the religious is going to tell you, open up your books and go study. Well, as you say, i got plenty of books behind me here. But I do something better. I actually live what the books say. I don't know how many of you have heard of the great Rabbi Maimonides, Rambam. Okay? This is a guy who lived literally eight, 900 years ago. He was a brilliant doctor, a philosopher. He's like what they call today a jack-of-all-trades. And even though most people won't acknowledge, and some won't even admit, this is a guy who really understood the prophetic, the mystical traditions. All right? He wasn't a Kabbalist like they are today with the discussions of all this metaphysical philosophy, the likes of which you see all over the internet. No, he understood the real deal. And one of the things that he taught was the importance of a healthy diet and, of course, exercise, physical exercise. So, in my opinion, what is the most important thing that one should be doing right after one's morning devotions? Just as a side note here, you know something? Devotions. I don't care if you're religious or not religious or whatever religion you observe. It doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. There's a universal reality, a universal force, where in which everything literally is alive, etc. You know, some say, well, it sounds like the Eastern religions. No, it actually sounds like our Torah religion, if you ever understood what our real Torah teaches, right? To think that God's like a little old man with a white beard sitting on a you know cloud somewhere, you know that kind of stuff. Well, I think you've been you know looking too much at the uh, what do they call it, the Sistine Chapel of Michelangelo. Great stuff, great paintings, but ain't real. That's what we call mythology, religion. They even call it avodazara or idolatry. God's not your father. God's not your king. Even though we use all those symbolic metaphors, God is the universal life. It's the consciousness of the universe. So in your morning devotions, call it meditation. You want to put on our talit and tefillin like we do in our Jewish tradition and say your traditional prayers, your shama, your amidah. Cool, great, go ahead. All right? But understand what it's really supposed to mean. That's soul building. All right? You've heard me, if you followed me on our kosher Torah school, I always talk about the importance of strong body, strong soul. All is one. We don't have this dichotomy of heaven and earth, physical and spiritual, one being good, one being bad. Everything's good, all right? It is what you make it to be. So in that respect, your morning devotions, doesn't matter, you could be atheist, what difference does it make? You don't believe in the soul? Fine. Believe in yourself. Believe that you have a power within you that you can unleash and expose and make this world, and especially your own lives, better than what it is right now. You have no interest in being better. You don't want to grow. You don't want to mature. Now, especially if you're a secularist, that contradicts nature. If you're a secularist, you believe in evolution. Isn't evolution like moving forward? You think it's accidental? No. You know inside you, you got to drive. You feel like you got a goal. Go for it. That's spirit building. That's your morning devotions. You can have it in the form of ritual religious prayer if you want, or silent meditation in any form, or just affirmations about yourself. I can do this. I will do this. Today I am waking up. These are my goals. I'm going to accomplish A, B, C, whatever the hell it is. And then you build your body. You make yourself strong. If you want to go to the gym, good old Gold's Gym there, go for it. Lift those weights. Push them hard. Push yourself beyond your limitations. Don't listen to these voices today of weakness, of emasculation, trying to cut your gonies out, male or female. Oh, don't push yourself. Don't hurt yourself. No, push yourself. And if you hurt yourself, so what? You'll get better. Make yourself stronger. If you're religious, if you believe in Torah, that's our Torah message. Whatever your message is, whatever your mission is, whatever your religion, whatever your beliefs, that should be your goal. Make yourself better. I wake up in the morning, all right? Go through the rituals. Why? I'm a rabbi. That's what I've been for all these years. What else am I supposed to do right now? Become a cab driver? Okay, this is who I am. This is what I am. This is what I do. 
So I follow my traditions because that's who and what I am. That's what I was born to be. That's what I am. Done. No value, just judgment, no moral statement. Just that's it. And else than that, you go become strong. You go become powerful. You make every day count for yourself. You are the center of your own world. You are the one, according to our traditions, who's creating the image of God. Make that image real. Make your day better. Do something good for yourself. Not to weaken yourself, but to strengthen yourself. Start the day with strength. Build your soul, build your body, build yourself. So that when you go to sleep tonight, as you've fallen asleep, you could say, I made a difference. Think about that. And more so, do it. Ariel Bartzadok here from the Kosher Torah School. Come look us up online. Come see what we have to offer you. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Shalom.